Hi everybody, it's me again, Boo. And I'm back. I, I got to be a part of that fabulous uh, uh, collaboration video um, that the FragCom put on, and that was big fun. If you haven't checked it, um, checked it out. It's in my liked videos and under my collaboration videos as well. And it was it was a good one. I mean, there was probably you know 30 of us that uh, all gave our favorite under the radar kind of picks you know for spring and um, <clears throat> so I, I try to every season I don't always get to it but I have really been taking note of the perfumes that I've been grabbing since it's, the weather has changed and spring has started um, <clears throat> up here in the Pacific Northwest it still is very cool and crisp at night um, but during the day, it's gotten into the 60s and close to 70s. So that requires a very versatile kind of perfume, something that performs well in both scenarios. Or maybe it doesn't perform well, but it has um, the right kind of aroma for that, that, that kind of climb um, from cool to warm and being able to um, uh, smell nice in, in those kind of climates, those kind of temperature changes. And so, you know, but a lot of these, a lot of your freshies and your springtime perfumes, um, quite a few of them, you'd probably have to have a little decant and reapply it sometime throughout the day. Um, I always carry decants with me, so I make sure that I'm loaded for bear for the rest of the day because I do not want to just smell like myself. <laughs> Because who knows what that could smell like by the end of the day. I mean, I test out pit sticks and stuff too, antiperspirants and deodorants and stuff. I've been testing some different brands out. And uh, I can tell you, not all of them are successful with me. So I need to make sure my perfume is right. So anyway, so I'm just going to, I don't have a... a these are the ones I've been grabbing the most again. I try to say that every time. I'm not going to put them in any particular order. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each one because it's a pretty big list. And I'm just going to go over them. I don't even know exactly how many there are. I think there's 15, 16, something like that. And uh, like I said, um, these are the ones I've been grabbing. Um, so some of them I'm wearing to try to figure out um, if I like them in this time of year or maybe I should keep them for cooler temperatures, warmer temperatures, whatever. So some of these may not seem appropriate for a springtime list, but um, that's the reason is because I'm also testing them, kind of seeing how they, they work in a little warmer weather because I probably was wearing them in the winter or whatever. Whatever. So, so anyway, I don't have them in any particular order, but I do kind of have them to wear the ones that I've been wearing day or night, the ones I've just been wearing night, and the ones I've just been wearing day. So the first one, um, I've got two from the House of Bond number nine. So the first one of those, I'm, I wear either or, day or night, and that's I Love New York for Her in the hot pink bottle. And this one is Mandarin Sandalwood Nutmeg Blueberry Muffin Accord Musk Rose Peony Pacholi and Villain Vanilla Bourbon Frosting. And honestly, I get Blueberry Muffin. I just totally get the Blueberry Muffin. And it is delightful. A little bit of the florals, and it's a very creamy kind of Blueberry Muffin. Love it! So like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these on each one. I'm just going to go through them. So that is uh, bond number nines. I love New York for her. I wear day or night. These two I lump together. Oh, here, let me do the other. Uh, this one I wear during the day. Um, this other bond number nine uh, entry. And this is Coney Island. I have, I don't know, eight or nine bond number nines. And I actually really appreciate the house. I, I love what they do with some of their perfumes. And it was one of the very first niche houses that... Um, I got into that really started drawing me into the world of niche and indie perfumes and things like that. Now this one, um, Coney Island is melon, guava, tequila, and lime, caramel, or caramel, cinnamon, dark chocolate, sandalwood, musk, vanilla, and cedar. And honestly, I get top shelf margarita mix. I do not get a lot of tequila in this. I don't get the booze. I really don't. I get the mixer, but not the booze. And let me tell you, <laughs> Jose and I, 
used to spend many nights together so and two fingers and you know there was a lot of crap tequilas that I that I drank back in the day and a lot of top shelf ones too and I don't get any tequila but I sure as heck get the the mix and it is good mix I'd probably start drinking again if tequila was mixed with something like this um, Anyway, it's fabulous. It's a great freshie. It's a little potent for daytime, but I still rock it during the day. I don't wear it a lot at night because it is, for me, a very fresh kind of a perfume, and that's Coney Island, bond number nine. Um, I have another house that I have a couple of entries in, and these one I'm, I'm not wearing as much, but, you know, I have a feeling in the summertime I'm going to be rocking them again because I've noticed with some of these kind of uh, single note perfumes that some of them can be really lovely when you wear them in temperatures that you normally wouldn't think of wearing them. And I have found a couple of favorites uh, that a lot of people would only wear in the winter that I wear now in the summertime too because they're a maze bomb. So um, one of them is Molecule 1, the other one's Molecule 02. And I just have the little bottles. But I wear these at night, and I will wear them to work, too. They're a huge hit, huge, huge hit around here, especially Molecule 01, which is the ISO E-Super molecule. Um, the Molecule 02 is uh, based off of Ambroxan, and um, one's amber and one's sandalwood, basically, and they are lovely, lovely. I never have had anybody sit there and say that it's too strong in your face or anything like that. And I always carry a decant of them because uh, even though they, they really do perform pretty well for me, um, I get six, eight hours out of them. But I still carry a decant just in case because I do wear them in the, the warmer weathers. Weathers? Warmer weathers. Warmer weather a little more often now. And uh, so that does tend to dissipate them a little quicker. So. Uh, molecule 01 and Molecule 02 by Eccentric Molecules. So I, the last house that I have, two entries, I think. No, I have more than that, so never mind. <laughs> Forget I said that. Rewind. But you're whenever you're, I'm giving that. There. Now we're back. So um, another one that I wear during the day quite a bit is uh, What We Do in Paris is a Secret by a Lab on Fire. This is a, a cult favorite, though. Um, and this one is bergamot, lychee, honey, Turkish rose, heliotrope, vanilla, tonka, tolu, sandalwood, and ambergris. And it is it's amazing. totally amazing. And if you haven't smelled it, you really need to get your nose on it. And uh, Men New York, Lucky Scent, I believe both of them have, uh, sell it, and you can get samples there. I think also Perfume Court, of course, Surrender to Chance, you know, like that. So... What we do in Paris is oh, Immortal Meadow by Sebastian. Hello. Yes. Um, I have the original, and this is the reformulated. This reformulated version is really, really good. Um, I sniffed them side by side, and it's hands down. This one is my yeah. favorite. This one is definitely more masculine. I think men, this will appeal to men quite a bit. And this one is much more versatile than the original formulation. And let's see, where do I have it? There it is. So it is violet, blackberry, um, iris, patchouli, vetiver, green grass, cedar, leather, benzoin, vanilla. And you don't get a lot of sweet, sweet with it at all. Spray Immortal Meadow. It does have a kind of an intense medicinal smell, almost a chemical kind of a smell to it. But that goes away, and once that goes away, you get this beautiful woody kind of a perfume with some blackberry and, and black currant kind of in the background. And I love it this time of year. This is a very bright, um, leathery, uh, slightly grassy, uh, black currant balm. I mean, this thing, the performance is awesome on it too. So anyway, I've been um, testing this one out in the warmer weather and I'm really liking what I'm smelling with it but it is strong so you got to be light on the trigger so that's Sebastian Immortal Meadow um, another one I've been wearing during the day and this one is actually a recent acquisition and I have to put it in a, it has a little dauber bottle toka. or toka and this is called Colette 
and the little bottles I think are so adorbs. Totes adorbs. <laughs> I get that from that commercial. I love watching Malcolm McDowell and James Earl Jones <laughs> sitting there reading young teenage girls' text <laughs> each other. Anyway, totes adorbs. I'm so hooked on that now. So only because they said it, because they are totes adorbs. Anyway, so Colette, um, bergamot, mandarin, lemon, juniper, berry, pink peppercorn, jasmine, violet, cyclamen, incense, sandalwood, musk, amber, vanilla, and cedar. And uh, for me, though, this is just a bright, citrusy, woody kind of a smell. And it's very inexpensive, too. So um, this little bottle, I think I paid 20 bucks for it or something, but I just put it in a little decant bottle and I'm good to go because I don't like to dab I like to spray it's a thing you know so that is Colette by Toka or Taka Toka Taka Taka Toka Taka Toka and um let's see oh I'm getting dry need a drink Okay, another one that I wear during the day is um, Vervain Month by L'Occitane. This is my go-to workout fragrance, actually. And it's really just a, a beautiful citrusy mint kind of a perfume. Um, it is pretty strong, though, I will tell you. So I have to only do like two sprays, you know, one up, one down kind of thing when I'm going to cardio. Um, and then uh, if I'm lifting weights you know maybe three but that's it and usually I do that like an hour before I go work out I won't put it on and right before I go work out I usually got to give it a little while to settle so but oh it's so good Vervain Month by Luxaton. I don't know if I'm saying that right but I try to make it sound like I am Vervain Month Luxaton. So this next one is my go-to, and I wear this one during the day, but I wear it a lot. I went through two or three decants before I had to start into my bottle. And this one is Laboratorio Olfativo, and this is Deco Vert. And But I will tell you, your performance isn't great on it. It's not bad. It's better on your clothes and your skin. Um, but it is, to me, the epitome of a springtime fragrance. It's beautiful, sweet floral green kind of a perfume and what is in it lily of the valley green leaves magnolia lilac uh jasmine water notes musk and oak moss and i don't get a lot of oak moss or anything it's a very moist a very dewy kind of grass and the sweet is not overpowering it's a very natural smelling sweet like you're standing next to a bed of roses or something without that thickness though that roses can have it's much lighter than that I absolutely adore it but I'll tell you I'm not light on the trigger on this um, I will easily do three sprays um, every time I wear it and then I have still my decants that I've still got I think one 5 ml decant that I carry around with me all the time but I try not to wear it too much because I love it and I don't want to get sick of it so that's Laboratorio Decover. One. And this one kind of goes together with another one, even though they're not from the same house, because they remind me of each other. And uh, one of them is Sublime Vanille by Creed. And I only have this decant, but it's a big-ass decant. I think I've got probably 40 mLs left in there. And then the other one that, never mind, the label got all wonky-fied, but this one is another Hilde Soliani one. And this is Vanille Shock, or Chalk. I don't know how Italianos pronounce it, but the knee shock. And uh, it's C-H-O-C, just so you know. And this one, you know, you would think by the title it would be heavy vanilla and chocolate. But I honestly, it smells like sublime vanille to me, which is a very light citrusy vanilla kind of a smell with a touch of chocolate once it dries down. But this one, in fact, let's see, where do I have that written? Where is that? Where do I have that? Where is that? I don't know where that is. There it is. The Hilde Soliani is sugar, bourbon, vanilla, and Madagascar vanilla. That's all that it says in there, but I swear I get some citrus, especially at the very beginning, some lemon or, or 
mandarin or something. And but when it once it dries down, you totally get the the vanilla and the chocolate. But it still you get that brightness to it. It still has this really uplifting kind of a feeling to it, which almost feels like the citruses last longer than just on the top notes. And then the Sublime Vanille is orchids, bourbon, vanilla, tonka, bergamot, lemon, and musk. And I think these two smell very similar. Um, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. I haven't done one of those, and I don't know about anybody else, but sometimes when you think, oh my god, that reminds me so much of whatever perfume, and you're just sure of it, but then you do a side-by-side -side and you realize there's vast di differences between the two, huge differences. But you don't know until you do a side-by-side. -side. So I will be doing that in a future video. So that's uh, uh, Vini Shock by Hilde Soliani, or Chalk. Chalk sounds... I like Shock better. <laughs> and then Sublime Vini by Crete are two of them that I've been wearing. So what's left? My nighttime scents. Now are, um, I'm going to get into five different perfumes I've been wearing at night, specifically. And I'm not sure why on some of these, but whatever. And the first one is a staple for most people this time of year, and that's Silver Mountain Water by Creed. Went through a couple of decants of this, too. Wow, I love this stuff. Silver Mountain Water, uh, bergamot, mandarin, green tea, black currant, galb galbanum, musk, sandalwood, and pettigrain. And it's just, it's for me almost a, a lighter, more, um, more, uh, more sweet and almost a little muskier version of like a Imperial Melissime or something like that, which I also love this time of year, but my husband wears this one. Where's that one? This one to me smells a little more feminine than the Silver Mountain Water. Uh, oh my God, I'm so confused now. As the, uh, uh, what did I just say? Uh, Melissa May Imperial. Imperial Melissa May? Is it MI or I am? Anywho, if you know, tell me. So uh, this one I just feel is more feminine and it's a little lighter because that, the, the Melissa May, or, now I'm getting myself all confused. <laughs> The MI, um, it to me is much more intense and really for a freshy kind of a perfume, it's, it's, it's a beast mode. And this one is not, I don't think, I think it can be if you overspray. And I like the title because you do get a touch of the way the citruses work with the musk, you do get a, a metallic touch there. And usually I can't stand metallic smells. Uh, Gucci Rush, I felt, was so, so metallic that I just couldn't even stand it. This one, though, it is beautiful, and I get lots of compliments with it, too. So that's Silver Mountain Water by Creed. Another one I wear at night. Okay, and this one, you know, I'm going to have a whole video again on kerosene because I'm getting uh, two different bespoke perfumes. I've already gotten one, but it's a very sexy wintry kind of a perfume so I'm getting another one from him that's more this time of year more um, uh, something I can wear more year-round but I tell you it is true once you get to know a perfumer and um, it, it I think it does alter your nose a little bit because I went working with John uh, John Pegg from Kerosene so closely this this last several weeks um, I've kind of gotten to know him. We've had some cool conversations about horror movies and stuff. And and I tell you, I went back and revisited some of his uh, perfumes, and I had to get this one. I just had to. And my biggest issue with his first releases was performance. But, you know, I don't have as much issue with performance now as I thought. So... Is that because I respect the man more? And so now <laughs> the perfume performs better for me? Is it magical perfume? I don't think so. I think it's all up here. <laughs> so anyway, and it's all relative. Perfumes have always been relative, will always be relative. Probably one of the most relative senses that you have. Um, but I, did I tell you what it was? I don't think I told you what it was. Santalum Slivers by Kerosene. I've been wearing the heck out of this, and I had a big old decant of it. 
that had been sitting around for quite some time. Um, and I kind of tested it for five different wearings and kind of put it away a couple years back, I think it was, last year, year before, something like that. So then I started wearing it again and I just fell in love. So I had to snag me a bottle and I do like the new bottles. I really do. They're very cool. So that's Santalum Slivers by Kerosene. And another one I've been wearing at night is one of those perfumes I was talking about earlier that if, if you only wear perfumes when people say, oh, that's a winter perfume, that's a fall perfume, that's a cold weather perfume, hot weather perfume, whatever, and don't ever experiment on your own with your own body chemistry, you will never find perfumes like this. And this is Elixir de Marveille by Hermes. And this is one, this one I don't even hardly wear at all during the cold winter months. I almost exclusively wear it in the warm weather. It's, and I can't even wait to start wearing it. So as soon as the, the clouds kind of break and it gets above 40, 45, I pull this out and start wearing it. And I will wear it all summer long in the hottest of weather at night. It is incredible, incredible. And I've gotten mad compliments on it in the hot weather too. So it's not just me. Um, other people appreciate it, it as has well. A Peru balsam, vanilla sugar, amber sandalwood, tonka patchouli, cyan resin, caramel, oak, incense, orange peel, and cedar. And it it's it's yeah, and some wood notes too. Um, so you really get this fabulous. It's not sweet at all. So don't let the caramel and the vanilla. Um, fool you. I don't get really any sweet out of this necessarily at all, but that doesn't matter. It's totally unisex. Beautiful bottle. I just love these bottles. And it's a gorgeous kind of a, a woody amber with a slight orange um, contribution. And oh, I just love it. And the hotter the weather, the better. Elixir de Marveille by your maze. So down to the last couple of them. Another one I've been talking a lot about and I'm so in love with it and I've been wearing it this time um, at night only because it's still cool at night. I don't know if I will in the summertime. We'll have to experiment with it. And this is Ivory, Ivory Route by Serge Shaw from the Join the Club series. Love these bottles. I wish you could see how the blue shines through it. Anyway, this one, um, Ivory Route. It's pretty simple. Spices, patchouli, sandalwood, allspice, and basil. And I get a little more out of it than that. This Join the Club series is kind of stupid. Um, you, When you buy a full bottle, you get a little card with a code on it. You go to the Join the Club uh, website. You put in the code. You put in your web, uh, your email address, I think it is. And then they tell you, error, we can't let you in. <laughs> I bought two bottles to join the club and I haven't been able to get into the fucking club yet. So who cares? But um, I'm in my own ivory route club. So this stuff is wonderful. Um, you really see, and I don't agree with, I don't know if people are guessing what the ingredients are or what, because what I get out of it is a slightly sweet, um, uh, there's a little bit of citrus in there and definitely some spices, some incense or something like that and pepper. I get pepper and not in your face kind of black pepper but a more more subtle kind of a pepper. Um, so I don't know maybe that's the spices they're talking about because it says spices, patchouli, sandalwood, allspice and basil and I think there's more to it than that. And When I first spray it I do get some citrus maybe some a little bit of uh, bergamot or orange maybe no not orange maybe a little more in the lemon or mandarin orange kind of a side uh, side of things anyway lovely wonderful terrific I'm gonna be wearing this this summer big time too um, if it is a cooler night I'm not sure because of the pepper that I smell in there how well it's gonna do if it's really hot but we shall see because I will experiment ivory route and last but not least, um, this one is a fairly new acquisition and that probably has something to do with why I'm wearing it this time of year because I'm in love with it. And this is by Frau Tonis and this is, I don't, I'm going to butcher this, Acrochecore. 
I'll be putting the, print, the spellings and stuff. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, it's number 12 by Frau Tonis. And this is apple, black currant, cinnamon, rose, patchouli, amber, vanilla, and benzoin. And um, it reminds me quite a bit of um, a less sweet, lighter, and a little more um, maybe fruitier version of ombre narcolet. This um, ombre narcolet, I don't really wear that much in the hot weather because it can be pretty intense um, unless it's a cool summer night. This one, I actually have been wearing it in a little warmer weather because we've had some freakishly warm weather lately. And so I have been wearing it because I just got it a few weeks ago and I the have to wear it. Of it. And I was so in love with it. But like I said, it's lighter. It's more of an airy version of Ombre Nargolet with a little more spice to it. A little more incense, I think, and um, a little less cinnamon, I think. And maybe that's the reason why I think it, you could pull it off in the warmer months, but I have been wearing it, so I didn't want to tell you a lie and tell you I haven't been wearing inappropriate perfume, but I have. <laughs> and I wear white after Labor Day, too, so there. So, um, anyway, that's Frau Tonis, and this is number 12, Accroche Core. Really good stuff. It, you can buy several different sizes on Frau Tonis website. They ship super quick. Um, you get, I bought a whole bunch of these little tiny 15 ml bottles. They are daubers, but I have a bunch of spray decants to try a whole bunch of them. And the Aqua Core is the one that I completely fell in love with. Kind of on the fence about some of the other ones. They're a little too feminine, a little too masculine. But this one was, as Goldilocks said, just right. So um, again, that's Aqua Core, Acroche Core. Acroche core. Oh, tell me how to say it, people. Tell me. Tell me, tell me. So, and that's by Frau Tonis. Love it. And those are my picks for spring. Well, they're not really my picks, but that's what I've been wearing this springtime and um, what I've been grabbing. So, anyway, that is it, and I hope you all have a good day. I'll talk to you soon. Enjoy your spring. Peace.